gentlemen, it's your favorite animal scientist once again, Mr. Kester Amos. Uh, we are back here in our home state, Bayasu State, and today we've got something new to show you. But first of all, we want to appreciate once again the Ghanaian Snow Farmers Association for giving us the award, the Space of Snow Farming in Africa. Uh, it's not every day you receive such kind of awards from a country that is not yours. But anyway, I like to call myself an African. I'm a Ghanaian, I'm a Nigerian, I'm a Cameroonian, I'm an Ethiopian, and so on. Everything that has to do with Africa, I'm in for it. So today, we've got something new to show you. And um, of course, uh, like we usually do, we have to experiment first before we come out. And we've done a lot of studies on this particular fruit for quite some time. And we feel it's time for us to share it with our brothers and friends and also fellow consultants. Uh, please, I would uh, encourage you to be patient to watch this video to the end because there's there are some very vital and key informations that I will give even after this uh, preliminary stage of the video. So first and foremost, I uh, want to talk about this plant. This is called Treculia Africana, African bread fruit. It is very, very important if you are a snow farmer. In fact, as a country boy, I grew up in the countryside, in the village communities, where we used to trap snails as a little boy growing up. And this is the plant we normally use to trap them, where we split it open, we drop it by the bush, and in the night we go there to point touch on it, you see lots of snails on it. Now there's a lot of nutrients from this plant that snails, uh, that snails derive from this fruit. Now I've been doing some real intensive study on this for quite some time. I would deem it necessary to now come out to give you some information about this fruit. Now this fruit is very good for snails. It boosts egg production. It boosts shell development and also production generally growth. It boosts all of that. So it is very vital. Though it's seasonal, and one of the researches we are doing is to see how to have it all year round, either through storage or uh, some other genetic means in trying to see how it fruits all year round. So these are some of the experiments we are working on currently because it is so vital to snows. In my language, in my dialect in Nigeria, I'm from the Jaw speaking tribe in Nigeria. We call it Oye. And in the eastern parts, the Igbos call it ukwa. They sell it by the roadside, the seeds. They fry them, tie them with coconut by the road. So that is what we're talking about. It's called ukwa down there. I don't know what the Yorubas call it or the Aosas, but the botanical name is Treculia Africana. The common name is African breadfruit. There is breadfruit, there is African breadfruit. So this is African breadfruit. So you can feed it to snails. Now, this video is being made on the 6th day of December 2021. This is dry season and it's the period of estivation for snails because of dryness, uh, which leads to them going into a period of dormancy that will result in loss of valuable growing time. They seal up their mouth with a cyst or an epiphram, which, uh, in which state they can remain till the early rains will come by March. So uh, during this time, snails don't lay eggs that much. Like in the wild, they don't lay at all. But under intensive production, they still lay, but the production is very minimal. But with this plant, you can get optimum production even during the dry season. Like we're talking to you right now, we're getting loads of eggs from our snails. Why? Because we're feeding them Treculia Africana. And this is an egg booster growth promoter and shell developer so you can try it if it doesn't work you can you can give us a call and uh, refute it even you can do whatever thing you want to do on our youtube you can tell people that we're lying to you no but this is the real deal for snail try it and it's gonna you're gonna testify of the uh, benefits of this now it comes in different colors this is the fresh one. You can see it's still very much greenish. So at the fresh state, it gets green. From green, it starts turning yellow. And from yellow to black. So you can't use it at the green stage 
or the yellow stage. You have to wait until it gets to this dark stage before you can use it. The reason is at this stage, it has a very fine aroma that wherever snails are, immediately they perceive it, they come for it. So that is why we have to allow it to get decay to a point before we administer it to the snails. So I'm going to take you into the concrete pens and show you some of the pens where we have uh, this administered. And you will see how much the snails love it and cherish it and how active the snails are even during this dry season. So we'll go over to the pens and we'll show you what it looks like inside there. So uh, we are inside the pen. We can see the pen house. Just have a view around it. It's a small one but well intensively built and the temperature, the atmosphere inside is very, very conducive for the snow. So this is what we're talking about. If you come close and I'll just zoom it very close so they can have a good view. This is the Treculia Africana. You can see they are almost done with this. This is the other part of it. So this one, they are still doing justice to it. But usually this is how it gets. So if you come over here now, you will see it again. We usually split it and spread it in the pen. So this is what they call ukwa in the east. So uh, these seeds, they don't eat much of the seed. They take more of the, uh, the soft parts of the uh, fruits. So that is the way it is designed. Now if you look at this pen, it's completely empty. All you have is just the seeds. So we can actually extract the seeds and still use them for human consumption. Because what they eat is they feed on the fleshy part of it, so they don't consume the uh, fruits. Sorry, they don't consume the seeds, which are very, very valuable to man. So you can see that it serves dual purpose. The parts we don't eat, we allow the snails to eat it, and the other parts we eat, we consume it, even after the snails have taken their part. So this makes it very unique. So it's a fantastic plant. If you are aware of it, I will encourage you to use it. If I know the benefits of this plant and I don't tell you, I, will, I wouldn't be a good consultant. So that is why we at Kester Amos Consultancy Services Limited, we are not about the immediate gain. But all we try to do is to create value and to see that people are carried along with the production system. So that's going to bring me to the second phase of this video. Now, um, from our last video, I don't know if you've seen it, you are aware that we were given an award, the face of Afri uh, snail farming in Africa, in Ghana, where we were invited to attend the Ghanaian Snail Festival. And we are also uh, given that award, the face of snail farming in Africa. So we want to appreciate the Ghanaian Snail Farmers Association. As it turns out, many of them are my fans. They follow me on the YouTube and they've learned so much from me. And they wanted me to be there physically to also give another lecture, which I did. And it was an interactive session. So they learned from me. I also learned so much from them. As a matter of fact, there's something I think I have said in a video that... I happened to find out that it wasn't correct. So I'm taking back my words. That is how everybody should do. When you find out that something you said is not the way it is, you have to come out and say, oh, sorry, I didn't mean it this way. It's the Akatina Akatina snail. I've always had the idea that it's a smaller species of snail. But on getting to Ghana, I saw that that snail is so massive. It's so big. I've never seen it that way. I've studied it in literatures, never really worked on it before. But when I saw it, it was a giant snail. In fact, it's so massive. And that's something I take back because initially I was given this impression that the snail is a small size snail because they lay very tiny eggs and they lay in hundreds. Yeah, so from literatures, we got some of those informations. So that is why sometimes you don't take everything you see on the internet. You have to get your hands on it before you can categorically say, yes, let's go. Just as we are telling you about Treculia Africana, we've studied it, we've worked with it for more than a year before I'm making this video. So I can categorically tell you this fruit, promotes growth, 
egg production and shell development. In fact, it's better than even the calcium you want to pack for your snails. It develops the snail shell faster than calcium. It allows them to lay egg more than calcium. These are experimental facts. But we don't want to go into the academic side of things. So uh, we'll just leave it at that. So uh, the Akatina snail is quite massive. And for that fact, with what I saw, I have the intention to grow it in Nigeria. It's not a common or popular species in Nigeria. But I'm going to start growing it in Nigeria in a system that will work. So uh, we're going to come up with that later on. Then there's another thing I learned from the Ghanaian Snail Farmers Association that I want Nigerian snail farmers to learn from them. They came together in an association. They have understanding. They have a common goal to grow the snail uh, industry in Ghana. But the reverse is the case in Nigeria. In Nigeria, the, uh, Mr. A wants to step on Mr. B to succeed. And Mr. C wants to step on Mr. D to succeed. That's what I've come to discover with the Nigerian snail farmers or consultants uh, on the internet, which is quite the opposite in Ghana, a small country. If they can have such unity, they look up to us. Snail farming in Ghana is at the infancy. It's at a, a low hem. They are growing their business and they see us as their grandparents in the business. So in fact, many of them, it's through my videos they had the interest to start snail farming and today they are doing very well so if a nation that is looking up to us and see what the nigerian consultants are doing online it's it's a shame on our part so that is why i deemed it necessary to make this video i've seen many videos sometimes i don't really have time going to search for people's videos for some of my clients will just forward share some videos to me and some of them are concerning so i deem it necessary to make this part of the video but you must understand we are not targeting any particular consultant this is just an advice if you are a consultant and you have a concept show the concept tell us about the concept and let us view it and see if it makes sense and will learn from it but if you see a concept from another consultant and you're not conversant with it, you don't understand it, don't go about criticizing that consultant that uh, what he's doing is not good, what you are doing is good. No, that's not the way to sell yourself. You show your concept, let us follow. We learn from one another. Nobody has all the knowledge in this world. I've been into snow farming for 10 years. I studied animal production for five years. So I can tell you a lot about snail farming and you won't feel sleepy. But still, I cannot tell you I know everything about snail farming. Just look at me learning from Ghana that are just babes in snail farming. So that is how it's supposed to be. We should learn from one another. You cannot have all the snails in this world to supply. The demand is crazy. At Kestayemos Consultancy Services Limited, a month, our minimum supply is 20,000 snails. There is no month we don't sell up to 20,000 snails. But yes, we cannot meet up the demand. What we do is we go back to some of our clients that would set up farms for and ask if they have snails. If they do, then we collect from them and also sell. So if you as a consultant, if you have snails and we don't have, we can come to you and put us together and market your snails and market our snails. That is the kind of understanding, collaboration that we should have in the industry. Instead of going about saying, Mr. A is doing nonsense, this is the right way. Or you go to a failed farm, maybe Mr. A set up a farm, the farm failed. You now go there and start showing that farm, that this farm was built by so so person, the farm has failed. But you fail to realize that the consultant is not the one managing the farm. All he does is build the structure, build the farm, and train the workers, and he's gone. And sometimes these workers don't even call the consultant to relate to him what is happening in the farm. And when such farm fail, instead of calling the consultant, they call someone else they see in the internet. And you now, you take yourself there and you start making yourself something you are not. So please, this is not to indict anybody. The whole idea is, let there be a cooperation between the consultants on the internet. 
Not if you don't want to share your knowledge with others, it's fine. But you, there's something you stand to benefit from others. Maybe you have someone that wants to buy 30, 40,000 snails and you don't have the capacity to supply. You can call a friend or someone can call you and say, ah, please, I need this amount of snails. Are you able to supply? It's something. So that is how we should put our heads together and work. We are a force in animal production in Nigeria, not just snow farming. So if there's anybody that has the right to say what I'm saying, I think I should be one of them. So that is why I'm advising, let's stop this whole thing about Mr. A is building his own farm this way and it doesn't make sense. Mr. B is building his own, it doesn't make sense. And this is mine. Mine makes sense. It's not a good thing. You've never seen that in poultry farmers in the Western world. You can never see one company stepping down on another company to sell their product. What they do is they come up with their concept and they sell their product. If another company buys into that concept, they can collaborate and ask, how did you do it? And they work together. Another thing I learned in Ghana is their greenhouse system. I'm building a farm in Ghana. Of course, I've shown it on the YouTube. Uh, it's in the infrastructural stage. But I saw a match they used for their greenhouse. It is very fine and very strong. It does the same uh, work the solaric and the shade net does for my greenhouses. Of course, I use the shade net and the solaric, which is the UV treated tarpaulin in my greenhouses. But this mesh I saw in Ghana does the same work these two things will do. So that is why I have reverted to using that material. In fact, I've ordered for it in bulk. So subsequently, you see some of my greenhouses, there will be no solaric. We'll go with just the uh, UV treated mesh. Because number one, it will beat down on cost of production. And number two, since it takes care of the issue of heat, and uh, heavy rainfall, then why not? So there's bound to be change. Change is the only constant thing in life. So you don't get to a point where you think you know it all and you don't take correction. So these are some of the things I've learned in Ghana. I'm going to take you the last part of this video. I'll take you to the greenhouse and show you our materials and also show you why we want to change it to this new material I found uh, being used in Ghana. So that's part of some of the things I've learned. As much as I've, I've invested, invested my knowledge in them, I've also acquired so much from the Ghanaian Snail Farmers Association. So I'd like a situation whereby here in Nigeria, we have such association or such harmony, even if we don't have to come together and share one another in a year or have a snow festival, but at least there should be some level of understanding between consultants. There should be professional ethics. You don't go about fighting one another. That is what I've seen on the internet. If we tell you the amount of messed up farms that we have corrected, you would not even believe it. But you will never see those videos in our clips. We cannot bring a video that a consultant built a farm and the whole thing is messed up and we start showing it to the world. No, no, no. We do the corrections and we let it go. We don't even make videos on such farms. That is what professionalism is about. It's called professional ethics. So you don't step on people's toes or people's head for you to become successful, no. So if you know something, you have a concept, show your concept so that we can all observe and learn from it. But don't go about criticizing and saying one thing or the other about someone else's concept. So that's the advice I have for us. So please, let's try and do our thing. Let's try and grow the industry, the snow farming industry in Nigeria and in Africa, instead of us battling ourselves over this uh, snail issue. You must have seen my videos on grass cutter. You've seen my videos on poultry, on pig farming, on fish farming. You don't have that competition. It is only in snail farming. So please, I want to encourage us like I said, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. There are many of us, many of us. The sky is so large to accommodate a million more snail farmers to come in. But because of these old things, 
many people are even scared of investing because Mr. A say this, Mr. B say this, Mr. C say this. No, it ought not to be so. In fact, I have seen people I trained on the internet having YouTube channels. I've seen people that were trained by people I trained on the YouTube as snow consultants. So these are things that uh, we see, but we don't talk about them. So I'm just trying to encourage the snow farmers and consultants in Nigeria. Please stop fighting one another. Concentrate on your system. If it's working, then focus on it and don't complain or don't try to stamp on someone else's business. So I'm going to take you now to the greenhouse. We're going to make it very brief there because the video is already a very long one. So I just stay tuned while we take you to the greenhouse and show you a few things. Out there. All right, so this is our greenhouse. So you can see the view of the greenhouse. This is what it looks like. Now we have this net. This is a shade net and this is the UV tapulin. So what I'm saying is we're going to be using a net, not this shade net. Uh, probably my next uh, uh, project on greenhouse, you're going to see the look of that mesh. It's quite different from this, but it's very hard and very durable. And the inside is as cool as it is right in here. So because it's going to be a single sheet, that will mean a lower cost of production. And also it's very effective. It can last at least about uh, five, ten, uh, ten years and thereabouts. So uh, that's what we're going to be changing. We're going to make a change on this. But this is going to remain the same. The side net is going to remain the same. So this is the top we are changing. So as you can see, this is very effective, very durable. You can see how it is. It's been standing here for uh, some number of years now. So uh, you can see how neatly it is done but a time has come for change in order to beat down on production cost and get similar results so we are willing to make that change so uh, i know many people have trouble with our uv treated tarpaulin and many have gone about complaining about it and all of that but that's what i was saying we don't listen to those things because it's giving us results what we want is results but if we have something that will give us still the same result or better result and uh, with a different outlook why not we'll buy into it and that is what we are doing right now so uh subsequently we'll be doing uh greenhouses without this uh uv treated sapoline so at kester amos consultancy services limited we are always trying to find ways to beat down production costs and give you maximum output from your uh minimum inputs so that is what we are trying to do so i hope uh nobody is going to pick offense in this video it's not targeted at anyone it's just uh, a mere advice and also an appreciation for the ghanaian snail farmers association uh for giving us that award we want to thank them and we also want to thank the fans uh those of you who have been following us closely for these years, you've made it possible for us to come this far. I uh, want to say thank you. I uh, also want to thank our competitors, the consultants and snail farmers out there for pushing us this far. We want to say thank you for that as well. And also don't forget the lesson to learn on this video concerning the feeding system, Treculia Africana. You can type that on your, uh, on your Google or African bread fruit. Uh, so that is one of the most wonderful feed for snails currently now so you can use it alone or you can use it with your formulated feed but the idea is variety they say is the spice of life so you have to change the feed uh once or twice a week you must not use the same feed regularly all through the year that is not good for snail farming so until we come your way again we hope it has been a wonderful experience for you this video and we hope that you appreciate it as much as we appreciate you thank you the number to call once again is plus two three four eight zero six eight five two five zero three two god bless you and bye bye